Matthew 1.18 and Luke 1.27 specify that Mary was betrothed to Joseph. Now, when we think of betrothal, we think of engagement. The Jewish custom of betrothal was more than an engagement and less than a full marriage because the marriage would not be consummated yet. It really was part of a, the betrothal was really part of a two-step marriage custom. During that time, there is to be absolutely no sexual contact between those two parties. So when Mary becomes pregnant during the betrothal period, it's not just inconvenient, it's scandalous. Mary, anybody would have interpreted, Mary had not been faithful. And yet we know from her question to the angel of the Lord that she was faithful. How will this be since I am a virgin? I mean, just in that, that, uh, that early teen honesty of, you know, blurting when you're confronted with, with a fact and how, how could this happen? Both Luke and Matthew state that Mary's pregnancy was due to a divine decision rather than human misbehavior. In fact, Mary's question is a stunning rebuke to people who are skeptical of the virgin birth. The angel's summary response in Luke 137 is, nothing will be impossible with God. You know, people who say, oh, God can't create the earth in seven days. God can't, uh, you know, cause a virgin birth to happen. God can't do this. God can't, do, you know, God can't walk on water. Wait. God can do whatever he pleases. All it requires is his decision. When you, when you experience that fog of fear, you have to come back to a number of the things that we've talked about in the previous weeks and things that you know from Scripture. Uh, in our first week, we, we talked about how, God, how names matter and Zechariah refers to the promise, uh, refers to the, the uh, promises of God. Elizabeth, how God secures what he says with an oath. John refers to the, the grace of God. God is gracious. When we talked about the wise men last week, looking all this, at all the circumstances that guided them to, to Bethlehem, first of all, well, really first to Herod and Jerusalem and then to Bethlehem, you realize that God prepares and provides a way. And if we really do believe that, then we can look at each of our individual sets of circumstances and realize that those circumstances in your life, that particular circumstance that's bugging you in your life right now, is not this discrete little piece that happens in isolation with everything else. That God has a plan. And because of that plan, and because he is sovereign, and because we know we understand the promises of God that his plans for us are good, Jeremiah 29, 11, that all things really do work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose, Romans 8, 28, that based upon that, that everything that happens is purposeful, and therefore, we can hear and listen carefully to what God says when he tells us, do not fear. Do not be afraid. 